Welcome to Rehash. On the internet, we're all news, his own news. We bring you the best and worst of what's happening today. Hey everybody, Covert Donut here, and this is Rehash. Thank you so much to Covert Donut who provided our intro. If you'd like to be cool like him, just uh, let us know in the description down below. There is a link to where you can provide an intro of you saying, this is who I am and welcome to Rehash. And then as a thank you, we talk about your channel at the end of any of our episodes. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I know we've got some newsy type whatever's to discuss. I'm gonna let you start. I wanted to talk about giant fighting robots happening. Okay, I want to talk about Katy Perry in a fight with nuns. That sounds really horrific. We'll get into it. And I wanted to talk to the Freedom Family about a guy getting his wings snipped. All right, so um, you went first in the introduction thingy, so that you means it. Ah, I get to do the honor. So anyway, a few weeks back, we covered a, a topic in Rehash, talking about an American company making giant robots. Giant robots. Yes, yes I do remember this story very vaguely. Yeah, you covered it. And for Did the I? most part, they issued a request to Japan. They asked, they said, hey, we want to challenge you with guns, robots, and we just want to go all out. Now, I personally didn't think they were going to respond. I thought that the, the robots cost millions of dollars to build. Why would they want to destroy them? But Japan responded, and they accepted the duel. Wait, However, wait, 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 wait. They accepted? They accepted the duel. Okay. Yeah, so they went all out. They made a really awesome video that you guys can see on the screen. And for the most part, they have you know pretty much everything set in stone. However, they are not going to be fighting with guns. They said it's too American. They're going to be fighting with just hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it's kind of like Rock'em Sock'em Robots meets, like, Pacific Rim? Yes, exactly. That, I, I like that idea. Bonus points if it happens in, like, <laughs> in the ocean. Right. <laughs> if they can somehow manage to do that, I'd love to see it. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Uh, let us know in the comment section down below uh, what you think of this story. Also, don't forget to click the link in the description. Go to the uh, the Japanese follow-up video. That's give them right. hashtag rehash. Let them know that they've gotten the Freedom Family hug. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, and then I wanted to talk to everyone about Katy Perry is, is currently uh, in a legal battle with some nuns. And th th here's here's the story. Uh, Katy Perry, along with uh, someone who wanted to make a hotel out of the property, um, are both bidding on this old convent in uh, in California. Yeah. Katy Perry, of course, wants to make it her home, and the other person wants to make this uh, into a hotel. Now, the nuns say, yay, hotel, and boo, Katy Perry. Now, their boss, the archdiocese, who legally has the authority, says, Yay, <laughs> Katy Perry, yeah. and boo, hotels. Now, how much is the actual covet worth? Um, the, the current bids are $15.5 million. Okay, yeah, that's... And $15.4 million. That's too with much. With Katy Perry being the cheapskate on the matter, actually. Really? Yeah. But, I mean, it's only $0.1 million. Yeah, yeah, it's only $100,000. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's not a lot of money. I, I... But the, the Archdiocese uh, seems to like the idea of Katy Perry owning this, um, which is kind of an interesting thing because she used to do, like, um, you know, like, singing about God and stuff. Right. I feel like it would almost, like, increase the value if she decided to move out, though. So. Yeah, yeah, this is this is true. Um, whereas, you know, it's not like there are already a million hotels in California. Right, yeah. There's even a song about one of them. Is it really? The Hotel California. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, I, I just thought this was a, a really interesting situation. If you'd like to read more about this, link is in the description. And you had a newsy tab, whatever. Right. So back in 1987, American Airlines issued a golden ticket to Steve Wait, Holstein. Like where you get to go in with the... Um, the guys with the orange face, what, what's that? The Oompa Loompas? Oompa Loompas, yeah, and you get and to like lean down in the river and drink the chocolate. Yeah, exactly! Yeah. That is a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory reference. Wait a minute. Um, so, the American Airlines doesn't have that? No. Unfortunately not. I wish they did. Maybe they do, we just don't know about it. We should call them and request it. But for the most part, anyway, they issued him a golden ticket. The guy flew over 10 million miles. He flew around the world thousands of times. It cost altogether 23 million USD. Anyway, he also had a companion ticket that he had purchased for 150,000 USD, and he was forging the names on the tickets. Wait, what? Yeah, he was forging the names on the, uh, on the tickets. He was doing really good deeds, though. He would, like, take random people that he had just met and fly them around the globe. Okay. But he, he was forging the signatures on them, and essentially American Airlines said, no more. If that's, I don't know. No maybe, more. Maybe that's what they really sound like. I'm not sure. 
But regardless, they I said think you no. have to shake your jowls a little bit. No more. Yeah. And they said no more. So now they are in a court battle fighting it out, similar to Katy Perry. But in this case, we're not fighting nuns. No, just Oompa Loompas. Maybe. All right. Um, well, I believe that brings us to the end of our stories, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think has, so. Has anybody else like legalized weed or or I, gay marriage? Is there anything else we should talk about? I, I don't think so. I... No. Okay. Just making sure! If you have any news stories you'd ever like us to cover, let us know in the comment section down below. We are open to ideas. Uh, we do try to keep this show as, as topical and interesting as possible. There are probably a lot more... Um, there are a lot more things we could do as far as just tent pole topics, but we do try to keep it interesting at least. Alright, moving on, I believe it's time to talk about... Comments! Yeah! Let's go! First comment of the day comes from TYYT Competitive Gaming. I believe that stands for thank you, YouTube. That's a pretty cool username. Yeah! So he says, I'm not sure if you already have, but may I suggest a review on TubeBuddy extension for Google Chrome? It is very cool. Actually, not only have we covered it, we've also made it free for all Freedom Partners to use. And we've also done an episode of uh, Rehash talking about it. Yeah. Uh, Zesty Mike's done an episode about it on Impulse. Um, the only person I believe who hasn't really talked about it or mentioned it is uh, George. Yeah. And that's probably coming down the pipeline at some point. Um, TubeBuddy is an awesome resource that, uh, that most of us here at Freedom absolutely love. It's a simple tool, though. That's the main thing I want to point out about it. I'm going to cut you off. It's a simple tool. That's why I really like using it. But, Not uh, only that, but you'll also notice sometimes when we link comments on screen, it actually has a TubeBuddy logo on it because we've been using their software. Yep. All right, moving on to second comment. Coming from Mag Mega Badger. I apologize so profusely for mispronouncing your name. He says, don't forget, there will, be a, there will also be a Minecraft movie as well, and it's from the studio that brought you the Lego movie. Really now? Because last I heard of a Minecraft movie, Notch was saying that he would not agree to uh, allow the IP to be used in that way. Wow, part. so you just stopped my dreams. Well, no, 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 no. There might be more recent news. Keep in mind, I have been working with Freedom for so long, and I actually got so far out of Minecraft news, they could have added, like, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. They could have added sea otters to the game, and I probably wouldn't know. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, I, I'd love to see a Minecraft movie. I really would. All right. And then I have one more from Chris Weston. Comment hey. number three of the day. Chris Weston says, guys, you miss a lot of stuff uh, with the Minecraft thing. And he goes on to criticize us. Um, and one thing that I would like to say, as we, you know, continuously point out, this show is not about hard-hitting journalism. A lot of times when we are talking about this, this news is just hitting. For example, this show is usually filmed about 24 hours before it goes live. So, uh, right about the time where you're seeing Rehash, we are filming the next day's episode to give us enough time to edit and and do all the and, things and that we need more to do. topics and find stuff. Yeah. And so keep in mind that, you know, in order to keep this show topical, occasionally we do have to skimp on the details. Um, and it's not something that we really like or that we're very proud of. Unfortunately, the nature of YouTube is if we wait around for all of the details, we're last yeah. to the draw and nobody cares anymore. <laughs> right. right. Which is one of the reasons why our intro is... On the internet, we're all news, it's a little news. We bring you the best and worst of what's happening today. Yeah. Not necessarily hard-hitting journalism there. So moving on, it's about time for us to talk about the partner! Let's go! Mr. Covert Donut, I have been looking around your channel, so has Zach, and we each have a little bit of feedback for you. If you don't mind, I'll go first. Just go ahead, by all means. More text in your descriptions. I am noticing a very, uh, a huge lack of text. Not only in your descriptions, but also your tags. Uh, seems like uh, when you are using tags, they're single word tags, you gotta do multi word tags. With, of course, single word tags thrown in there just as kind of a catch all, but you know, you wanna cast a more narrow net. Um, you want to not look for, um, say, uh, Diablo 3 with Diablo and 3 being two different <laughs> right. tags. You, you, you want, you know, multiple words there. Um, also, uh, I'm noticing as far as your art, you've got some really, really nice art. I can tell that you spend a lot of time on it. However, sometimes the, the color palette is so muddy that it's hard to differentiate the elements that you've added versus what was already there. Right. Um, so 
do keep that in mind. Try to go for something a little bit more poppy. And of course, like I said, more text will never hurt you as long as it's not spammy stuff. Right. But uh, yeah. No, actually, I wanted to add on to the thumbnail thing. You know, as a YouTube content creator, the, the biggest downfall to my channel when I first started was when I made thumbnails, I was making a thumbnail on the entire screen. Mm -hmm. Then when I would upload it to YouTube, it was shrinked down to like that size. So if I can suggest anything, now take this as you will. I like your thumbnails. I, I literally do. They're unique, just as Anthony has posted out earlier. However, take in mind that when you're making the thumbnails, they're going to be shrinked down to super, super small. So doing like sideways tags with 3D, it, it's very difficult to see. So if I could suggest anything, you had a video talking about 10 facts where the text was super huge. You should do that on every video. Not to the point where it's annoying, but I would do it to where your viewers can actually see it. Yes. And again, you know, adding on to what Anthony said, doing relevant colors, doing yellow or, you know, a light red or something like that to actually make it poppy for your viewers. Keep in yeah. mind that a lot of YouTube is all marketing, marketing right. yourself and you know, using marketing colors is going to be a big thing, which means very bold colors right. and also contrast with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, good channel. Um, he's currently sitting at 22 subscribers. Hopefully, after this episode goes live and uh, and we look back, he'll be at a much higher number because, I mean, the guy's got talent. Um, I like it. So go, go, go check it out, guys. Open the description. Don't rip it. We're not ripping it anymore. Gently open it, click his channel, and spam it with rehash. Yeah. All right, that brings us pretty much to the end of the episode, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Till next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and do all those things that make us love our jobs. Also, be awesome to yourself and amazing to each other. See you guys later. Bye, Freedom Family. RIP THE DESCRIPTION OPEN! <laughs> RIP IT!